I think it's just when people don't know boundaries. Like yeah. we were in the cinema and someone took a picture of us with Flash and they ended up leaving the movie before it even started oh because they were so embarrassed. Okay, so I am here today with three special guests. Oh. Their names are Simon, Talia and Joshua. Sorry, Josh. Always in trouble. <laughs> Today, we are doing a video where fans ask YouTubers questions that fans are too scared to ask. I've done similar videos over um, on my channel with Calyx. Is queefing a turn off? All right, okay. And also Becky. More common than boys, isn't it, completely? Oh, completely, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like boys, I mean, two pumps and they're done. Right? <laughs> so check those out as well. The link will be in the description. I asked people on Instagram to send in their questions. So I have a list here. And we're just gonna go for him. How are you guys feeling? Are we excited? Is that what I asked? Um, no. Oh. I'm nervous. Yes. <laughs> I just don't know what you're gonna ask. Yeah, I know, I know. Question one is, how do you stay motivated to post videos? Don't. I've, I've stopped YouTube, this is my end video. This is his actual announcement video. The title yeah. is Why I Quit YouTube. I don't, honestly, that sounds so bad, but like, if I don't feel motivated to post a video, I'll just find something else that I can do. That so you'll stay productive in another way? Yeah. I'll, I'll like move my motivation over to something else. Like I'll do a TikTok or I'll stream or I'll write a song. Um, obviously I try and stay motivated and post videos, but yeah. sometimes you just don't have an idea. And yeah. I, I can't force myself because I don't think I'm a natural YouTuber. We love that. Confessions of a YouTuber. I think it's just keep the ball rolling. As soon as you stop, it's so much harder to get back into it. That is a million percent true. Yeah, when you're posting all the time, ideas just come to you. And then, you know, you nab a few YouTubers' ideas as well. Yeah. I find that, like, staying inspired like by like seeing what other people are posting is like a big thing as well like just to kind of keep me wanting to post i think it's a very learned habit like you just you learn to wake up and get to work get to work get to work get to work mm -hmm. um and you like you like i always say like yeah like if i go to bed and i've done something productive then it's a bad day my brain's wired just to wake up and do something whatever, whatever that's like yeah wherever it could be it could be anything what is a typical day in the life of a YouTuber? I didn't like the way you said that. I didn't YouTuber. either. YouTuber. <laughs> I wake up at like one, yeah, then sit on my computer until one. Yeah, literally. <laughs> one to one, that is the yeah, like Simon yeah, yeah, But yeah, Simon, they would go film from like what, 12 to like eight, 12 to seven, um, depending on what the actual shoot or concept is, if it's traveling somewhere. And then yeah, a normal YouTube day is wake up whatever time you want to wake up and then just sit at your office or yeah. your desk for as long as possible realistically that could be recording yeah. that could be editing that could be meetings on skype that could be emails that could be anything, anything yeah. literally when first starting off what's a good way to get your videos out there for people to see clickbait i mean i would definitely agree with that Make but sure don't lie in your title yeah there's a difference between a clickbait and like it's, it's being clever with your title so that people can be like oh it's clickbait but it's like but was it or are you just done when you clicked on it mm. you have to make sure the content's good enough that they stay it. yeah but sure. clickbait the hell out of it i i would say copy trends maybe um just just to kind of like get your channel out and then like get traction so oh, yeah but just be consistent be consistent well, a lot. definitely and Coming collab collab yeah the collabs they used to be okay no well. they're not as good as they used to be but they still definitely still good i guess okay but maybe they're not as like big though the collabs aren't as like oh like make sure you check out this person because i think it's probably really it's, found it's like a throwaway comment of like yeah they always gonna be on their channel so check it out if you want yeah um, there's also just more there's way people, more, more people YouTube, yeah, yeah there's more youtubers so like hearing a collab, you're not like instantly like, oh, there's a new person on YouTube. What editing software do you use? Sony Vegas. I use Final Cut. Sony Vegas. Premiere Pro. You look really happy with that Tell one. Tell because I movie. finally got to say it. Tell them what your real answer is. iMovie. <laughs> I used that on iMovie for like the first year of my YouTube. I feel like a lot movie. of people so do. It's yeah. free though, isn't it, iMovie? Mm, yeah. Yeah with, yeah, with the Mac. Don't you have a Mac? Oh, you have to have a Mac. Yeah, it's an eye movie. Oh my God. Does it annoy you when fans come up to you in the street? Like yes. Photo? <laughs> well, no, it doesn't. Oh no, as, long as, you're, as long as you're polite, then yeah. you are more than welcome. Yeah, the key is if you come up to like someone, it's much better than 
just like looking from afar and pointing or like mm. taking pictures or like saying their name loud enough that you can hear. Yeah. I, I would say that my only like pet peeve is like when like me and you are like at dinner and we're mid dinner and like people will come up and like say hello or like they'll want a photo and you're like chewing your food, like you're mid eating and like it's fine, like I get it, but just wait until he's finished, you know, and then it's fine. Mm. But um, yeah, like that, I don't know why, it's just always, it's always got to me, like even since like the very start when we first started. I think it's just when people don't know boundaries, like yeah. we were in the cinema and someone took a picture of us with Flash and they ended up leaving the movie before it even started oh because God, they were so embarrassed. So it's like, just don't, you could have just said, oh, can I get a photo? Oh. Yeah, just, just don't film, don't film us for a far. So it's weird. a girl though. Yeah, yeah. So they I want to know what he said to her though. Well, no, I think maybe maybe she didn't know. Maybe he was just like trying to get a photo. Yeah. So basically, like, approach them. Don't like film from afar because that's always that's always. Yeah, don't film from afar. Don't be rude. A lot of people can't touch us. Go like, yo, what's good? How are you? And they just say like, love what you do, and it always that's it. Don't like. It's very, very obvious when you pretend you don't know who someone is. Like when someone's like, oh, look, it's Cal Freezy. Like to you, it's not funny. It's been done a million times. <laughs> She's calling him out. It does happen genuinely. Yeah, but you can tell when it's genuine. Yeah, 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 you can. You can tell when someone's joking and it's like, you that joke's been rinsed. Like it's, it, is it just, it's so awkward when people do it. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Please stop asking me where KSI is. And stop oh asking me where God. Simon is. <laughs> I don't have a tracker. Yeah. What's it like living in a house with other YouTubers? I really liked it. Although it was obviously a gamble. I think some yeah. YouTubers might not have been as pleasant to live with as oh, yeah. the three oh, I lived yeah. with. You guys like got it so good. Like it's mad because I think people don't realise that you guys didn't, you hadn't, you didn't really know, know each other that well. Um, you moved down from like, where, where Sheffield? I was, me and JJ, like, no, me and JJ were Watford. Vic's from, Sheffield, Vic's from Sheffield. Oh, Vic's from Sheffield! Yeah. First one was a gamble in a sense that I think like we all probably spent like for nearly half of our earnings on the rent we paid, which was a gamble in itself. We kind of believed yeah, in it. That wasn't really, that's terrifying. Um, it's terrifying. Well, I'd only met you like earnings. two or three times. I'd, I'd only met Vic once, so it's like moving into a house with them is kind of risky because mm -hmm. What if we didn't actually, like, we haven't met that much. We'd spoken a lot. Also, moving to a new area and yeah. new people. Yeah, they, 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 ultimately, they have to trust me because I picked the house, viewed the house, signed it all, and then they came. Oh, wait, did you not even see it? No, no I, I videoed it. I went, I viewed, I viewed it with you. But, like, do you think that it helped your ch channels, like, all being in one 100%. house? Absolutely, 100%. Because we kept doing the, like, the group videos in the kitchen mm -hmm. and stuff. and Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like, just, like there's just you YouTubers guys, yeah. at your disposal. And also back then, like collabing was big, wasn't it? Like it was. And that like, helped you guys a lot. The third house like was termed as the like, the factory by everyone, mm -hmm. purely because like we would just pump out content non-stop, and that was our thing. But I think also having people around you who are, like you'd wake up and Simon did a video, so I'm like, okay, right. In video yeah. mode, let's go. And then, or Jay's out filming, or Vic's doing something. Vic's filming until 5 a.m. doing Minecraft. So I'm like, oh, I should stay up and do more. Oh, I should stream. I'm not able to do something. Yeah. It's motivating. Yeah. Yeah. If everyone else around you is like super hard working, always uh -huh. doing something, you naturally just kind of gravitate oh, towards true, that. Yeah. Where if, if your whole friend group is very much like, let's just do nothing, let's go out partying tonight, you're kind of going to follow that yeah, trend. So, true. so, a big part of anything, I think, is making sure your friend group so that helps is your ideal and that's to what you do. Control. Yeah. How do you deal with hate online? Doesn't bother me. I feel like, yeah, 99% of the days it doesn't get to you. 99.9% .9 of the days. Did it ever? No, from the get go. Really? It randomly. Because you definitely went through a stage where yeah, it was like. The, where one video for me just went mental and I was getting attacked oh. non stop and I was like, well, this is annoying. For me, it wasn't something that was like learnt. I've never really been that bothered. Yeah. I was just a bit like, well, I know I'm putting these videos up, I know people are going to say horrible things, so like. Mm -hmm. Go on. <laughs> I, I do think it depends on the day. Yeah, I, yeah. I would agree with that. Because some days I'm la like, I'll literally laugh at, at them, yeah. being like, okay. But sometimes I'll read it and I'll be like, that did that. It's a little bit true. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's when it's something that you it's already believe. True. You're like, yeah. It plays an insecurity of yours, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for the most part, it's funny because it's like, wow, you really sat there and wrote that. Yeah. Like, it's all, all about like the perspective and how yeah. you view it. What would you say? I'm like 60, 40. Some <laughs> days it gets to me a lot. Really? Yeah. I think that's normal though. Like oh, like the size of your channel and also be, being part of the, the Sidemen, you're gonna get it every day. Yeah, but it's like, when I, whenever I talk to JJ, he's just like, oh, just, 
I just don't look because there's every now and then with him, for example, you can tell he's looked at the comments. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, and it's like only it's I'd say it's like once every like three four months kind of. He's thing. the one guy that I would never guess he would get affected. It's, it's, it's literally for like a day, if that, and it's always for something very specific. Mm -hmm. Whereas. Yeah, I'm, I'm the opposite. I mean, like, hate comments don't get to me. I think more like, you, anything personally about me, like you could say something about my look, or how I look, or how old I am, whatever, like it doesn't bother me. Like no, I, yeah. I'm more than happy and comfortable with who I am. I think the only thing that's ever get to me is when I believe in a product. If I believe like, oh, this Simon video is very, very good, it's a good product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if people go against that, it doesn't, so I don't see it as bothering me. I'm just kind of like, like, do you not get it? Like, yeah, I, like, yeah, I, it's I, I find it frustrating, but that's the only, only kind of comments that get towards me as well. Yeah, I get that. Things where I think something's good and it's not, so like, Different opinions, but opinions are opinions. I'm yeah. like, I can well, also accept that. I, I'd actually agree with that as well. It's not normally like if I get a comment on a video about the other person in the video, that really gets to me because I'm like, what if they've yeah. seen it? I don't know if they're going to be able to, yeah. like, yeah. And I yeah. feel like I've I just created know. a video that's now good. I get like protective, okay. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Mine's yeah. just because in my head, I'm like, I just can't understand people. I know. But like, have you not been around long enough for that? To not yeah, happen? I have. But well, I think it depends on person. <laughs> I think it affects people in like different ways. A way that I find has helped me because, like, I mean, I I've not really like ever been bothered by it. So the fact that like it will get me down, mm -hmm. but I have days or or, or like mo moments where I'm like. I don't know, just get a little bit annoyed by it. I get more annoyed than upset, I think. But like the way that I see it is that like I put myself in their shoes and I'm like, wow, it could never be me. Like I could never sit it's there really and be like, me, me. like I could just, uh, and it just, I'm just like, whoa, like what this person sense. is is either really sad or they're just very, very young and they're just not emotionally mature. But I've like, actually watched someone write a hate comment. So someone I used to work with, we don't like that. Um, Actually, okay, we're gonna cut that out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know who that is as well. You can just bleep the name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who he is. I don't know his person's name. I just said around the same name. name. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, he worked for uh, a celebrity that he didn't like. And I remember we were sat there and he was like, oh, look, I do this thing and I go on and I have like a fake account. <laughs> and like he wrote a really like not very nice comment. And I was just oh literally gosh. sat there like I've never witnessed someone do this before. And he was like, in, like he was laughing like, <laughs> like, it's so funny. Like she's going to read this. And I was like, and that was that was one of the first things that made me realize, like, I do not want to work with you. This is freaking weird. Like, mad. How do you carry on posting when you're going through a hard time in your personal life? I think videos, like making videos and working is escape in itself. Yeah. Like, I, I, I attribute a lot of like, I said before, like when my parents got divorced, I always say that the reason why I got so good at certain games is because I just locked myself in my room. Yeah. And I played COD for eight hours a day which ultimately is like the start of my YouTube career. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think mean, anything like that, like putting your, putting your energy into something else, like turning negative energy into positive energy and putting it somewhere else is the best thing you and can you do. And you know that obviously making vids and then like po po posting them, you feel good because you feel productive. Yeah, it's productive yeah, so yeah. it's like... Just having it out, but just literally like anything. Like say like, if you're going proud time, you put all the energy into just doing anything you like and you enjoy doing, whether it's mm -hmm. football, whether that's like makeup, yeah. whether that's going gym, whether that's anything, that's the best thing you could do. I'm yeah. sit, I'm let it sit, sit there and build inside of you. Yeah. Well, that's it. it. Again, I think it depends on your personality. Some people like feel like when you're sad, it's one of those things. Do you listen to sad songs or do you yeah. listen to happy songs? Just the people around you. Because mm. like, for example, now, if anything happened, like say for example, JJ lost to Logan, mm. he would have been in like, a pit. Yeah. yeah. He would have had to still do side videos. Yeah. So he'd been brought out of the pit, yeah. 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 And then we would have made fun of him and hopefully he would have started and laughing just, at it. And you'd yeah. like yeah, you'd naturally learn to be yeah. like, okay. Surround yourself with people that are like yeah. are decent. This is a good one. Oh. What have the others been? Okay. Okay. Oh. Is it hard to have privacy and how do you strike the balance between your private life and your public life? This is a good one for, I mean, all of you, but for people in relationships, I think it's important to talk about. Because it was Privacy. Like, Why don't you talk first? It's, it's striking the balance. You've been dead a long time. Hmm. I, I mean, I've done so many things private. So like when I started YouTube, I was private. So and I was private. No, no, but I was private as in like, yeah, I didn't show my face. face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did it as the Hannah Montana effect where like I went to school, I was someone online, but I was also someone in school and I allowed to have that two worlds still. And then, yeah, then obviously you came along and I kept you secret for a good four or five years. years. But I just felt like it, 
I've seen it so many times so people make they go public their relationship mm. and then it all falls apart mm. because you're exposing someone to a world of a lot of information mm. and just like especially if they're not used to it I wasn't even even on Twitter was I <laughs> I got Twitter when I met you like a year after after, after I met you crazy you were quite you've been you were quite slow to a lot of things out there I feel oh, what was that we met in 2010 <laughs> look mate you are so you got in eleven. You're in trouble. So, yeah. <laughs> so every, like everything that we kind of done, it just happened like at our own pace. Yeah. Um. And so like when we was like when I finally was kind of like public as your girl girlfriend, it wasn't like a massive deal. Slowly, people kind of found out. Like it's easier just to uh, kind of show your girlfriend, especially the world, because it's uh, kind of, it's always harder to hide someone now. And also, people are way more interested, I think, when you hide it than when you yeah. don't. Yeah. No, so yeah. with, Talia, to be happy. with Talia, it was different though, because obviously <laughs> she really was already doing YouTube and everything. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we still weren't like public for like a six months. Six yeah, months. something like that. There was like weird little things where it was like certain videos. Oh my god, that I think that's what made it more like it's not worth being private when you have to actually physically hide it. Yeah. Like when you're just doing, like Josh would be filming videos in his room and filming COD videos, whatever, it wouldn't be natural to be no, like, oh, Frey's in the background, he doesn't have yeah. to like push her out to the side. Whereas like we'd be at an event that we'd both be filming and it's we'd have to sort of be like, okay, right, oh, you film over there, I'll film over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, can Different you not angles. put us in the vlog? Like, yeah. can you make sure we're not together in the vlog? Like that makes it so much harder. And then when you accidentally do show someone, everyone on Tumblr and everyone on Twitter is like, oh my God, they're in the same room at the yeah. same time. YouTubers do, who do have girlfriends, but like they are private, so it's yeah. like some people do keep it completely it's private. Part in our social circle as well, just like because we go to a lot of group yeah. events together, we go do a lot of things together. Mm. It's easier when you're not both on like yeah. thing. If you're both YouTubers, I think it's almost impossible. Unless you do like some completely separate, separate yeah. content, like, like, like if one's a gamer yeah. and one does like yeah. fashion videos, maybe. They never know. Yeah. Very specific, but ooh. So, how much time does it take to make a full YouTube video? Filming, editing, and everything. It does completely depend on the video, I would agree. Like I did, the gaming videos we used to do was like, you'd record it for an hour, you'd spend uh, half an hour to an hour editing it. Mm. You'd probably, probably about the same amount of time it took to record it. You'd yeah, because yeah, you have to watch all the Wow, yeah, that's really quick though. Half yeah. an hour editing. But even for like context, like what about a side men's video, for example? Some are like, yeah, they can be anywhere from three hours to three days yeah. in terms of filming. And then the edit, uh, we actually outhouse the editing. That's been anywhere between like six hours and five days yeah, or a week. Yeah, I, I, know, I know from Con that. Spend. Yeah, those videos are very high production. On average, on average, for one of my videos where I sit in my room and I make a the thing is, it depends if I'm doing like a music video or like I'll film for maybe two hours and I'll edit for two hours. Yeah, without any breaks and stuff, because I, I like to film and then I put all my content into Premiere mm -hmm. and then I cut it up and then I'll have a, I'll, I'll just like stop and I'll stream or like whatever. And then like the next oh, day I'll, go, I'll go through and like do like the zooms and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm not like grinding through the edit. But you're not, you're not hundred, like hundred plus videos deep. No. So I feel like the, the more videos you do, the quicker and quicker you yeah. get and the more yeah. efficient you get. Cause you're like, oh, well, I need to get onto the next, mm -hmm. like onto the yeah. next one kind of thing. Yeah. So realistically you could do a video in, in 10 minutes. But yeah, there's no real answer for that question. There is no yeah, real answer. It's such a big It could be it's anywhere. Very... It could be like a month, it could be 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. How do you not let numbers define your worth in a numbers-based industry? That is a very good question. I think they did for the first like four years. I think it's hard not to it's let it. That's the thing. They don't define your worth, they define your business. I think that's oh. what I, I separate it. I see YouTube, as much as I am being myself, it's still a business. Yeah. Making music is a business. It's, I don't see it as like, oh, they don't like me. It's like, okay, that wasn't good for my business, so I need to do this. But like, say for, for example, like if a video doesn't do as good numbers as it did the last one or like the next one, how do you like not let that kind of affect you? You can't put your personal feelings and rely on a machine to no. allow, allow you to give you what you want. Cause like, it's very easy but to be machine. consistent with your view. Like me and Simon now, okay, I, I know I'm gonna get this many views guaranteed. And there's a chance it may go higher. And it would, it would never, never really go lower. Where now you could have it's such fluctuating numbers. 
Yeah, because you're relying on an algorithm to actually feed people your video. Yeah. I don't see it as a negative thing though, but I do use numbers as a way to you check your it. business. And I think that it's a little bit silly when people are like, I don't keep tabs on my numbers and stuff. It's like, well, if you see this as business, you kind of should just keep mm -hmm. a rough idea. You don't have to be like, oh, I gained this many followers today, this many, it doesn't have to be like that. You should know roughly where it's heading and like yeah. what helps you and what grows. I am gonna go completely. <laughs> I never check Social Blade. I never check things like that. I don't, I don't, it doesn't make me feel, even if I'm doing good, mm. even if I'm on the up. How many views did your last video do? Um, 750. How many views did the video before that do? 200k. How do you know this? Because I'm on my channel. Because you keep track of it. You can track your numbers. You keep tracking a different way. Oh, okay. It's finding the number that's your goal. So for you, money, the money number is the goal because it's like, that's my motivation. Whereas for you guys, it's like, it might be a view number because it's like, okay, this is doing this better for my channel, which means ultimate growth in the end. Mm. Yeah. And again, but I think everyone should have some sort of goal that's trackable and numbers are the only thing that is trackable. That's yeah. why people go to numbers. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a goal, like how, how many subscribers I want to hit. Like the big yeah. goals are anything about motivation. It's like, imagine like, if you have business and numbers well, which it is, mm. if you're like a small company, you're going to look at your profit yeah. loss, you're going to look at your sales just, of products. It's just like, that's and you need I mean, to, they're, they're all the same numbers you'd look at as a business. You should so, treat it like a business and you should look at numbers. When I, so if I look at, if I go through all my analytics or whatever, I will look, my main channel I'll literally go, did my last video do all right? That's it. My second channel I'll go like, oh, how have my videos been doing like compared to the others? But mm. Like a little bit more. Then I learn like my podcast channel and I'm literally like, I look at every video, I look at like any oh. subs that's gained. You go to then a new product, it's a new goal. Yeah, then yeah, I learn like the Twitch new... clips one and I'm literally there like, how much is it, uh, how much is each video done? How many subscribers have I got? Yeah, because it's, like... it's a new project. I think we, yeah. we find new, like that's what we've always done. If anything we've done, like side things, like same with boxing, like it's, it's the same thing that like, you kind of like, no, yeah, you're right. you, you, when you have something new and exciting, it's fresh. Like yeah. you love to, like, love checking it out. It's well. Yeah, you get kind of like addicted to like. The new numbers, yeah, because mm -hmm. it's new and it's fresh. Okay, well from that, can you explain the concept of earning revenue through YouTube? Like how does it work? What does it mean? I mean, there's copious yeah, amounts of variables lessons. there. Like, well, so it, I think I mean, if you go from advertising revenue alone, obviously you watch a video, you'll see a typical 30 second advert that starts, typically skippable, five seconds. That earns X amount of money, which we don't even know. Like, we won't know it numbers It depends on the video. Yeah. And the chat list of video, the style of video, the content of video. Where it's clicked and from. And we don't get told this. Yeah, where yeah. it's clicked from. Yeah. If that person has seen your channel before, the most valuable adverts you, that exist uh, are mid rolls. So they're the adverts that you see between, like, whilst watching. So it could be at three minutes, six minutes, ten minutes. It could be anywhere along those things. Mm. The one that like kind of annoys you, half your video, is the one that's earning the person you're watching the most. Mid rolls, yeah. But Google just literally have like some, a company comes in and goes, I have hundred grand spent on adverts. I want to target to males between 16 and 24. Google is tracking everything you do, like where Facebook is. So they'll find all 16, 24 year olds out there mm. and just fill uh, adverts videos. to videos. Obviously, there's going to be side videos. Be anyone who like any kind of FIFA content, so you get like Gillette adverts on FIFA content, and that's why on makeup videos you get L'Oreal content. Like, mm. there's you'll, you'll realize that there's brands that target in certain Tailored, audiences. Yeah. Um, so that money then, I guess, is shared and distributed from the top, from Google getting it and then spreading it to us at the bottom and we get little penny drops per viewer, like it's tiny amount per viewer. Yeah. But there's so many different variables there and we aren't told by YouTube, we, we just know this yeah. because we've done it for so, so long. Like we still don't really get what de no. determines a good CPM. And a CPM is like um, money that you get per 1,000 views, am I right? That's what everyone looks at, CPM. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every, every don't YouTuber. go to analytics with CPM because that's not a real thing. No. It doesn't help you. Being a YouTuber, slash influencer yeah like being someone who earns their money through instagram youtube etc do you think that doing that is more stressful than doing a normal nine to five i think it depends on the person you can literally decide with what you want it to be yeah you always be more free you can and you could be someone who posts once every two weeks mm. and then you, it basically depends on how much money you want to make yeah if you're satisfied of earning what you'd earn at a nine to five then you could probably work a certain level and get to a certain level and stop and kind of like, okay, this is where I'm comfortable, I can enjoy my life. That's not more stressful though, because then you kind of put yourself against other people and also maybe other people in your job, like being like a YouTuber, like you kind of feel pressured to be doing stuff all the, the time no, because you've not, you've not got a nine to five. No, they, 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 they found a place where yeah. they can do it. But it depends on the person. Yeah. Like I would find nine to five stressful because I don't like the idea of like 
conforming to something that I have to do. Like, if I have to be at a job at nine, I have to leave at five, and like... But it'd be normal. You yeah, is that not something... I, do, I did find that stressful. When I worked, um, part, it was part-time, but because I had to be there at the weekend, I knew, I was like, every single Saturday for the next four months, five months, I know what I'm doing, and I hate knowing what I'm doing. Honestly, I would do my shift on a, um, a Saturday. It was two till ten. Shitty shift, but I did it. And then at ten, I finished, and that like I shut off. Whereas this job, you film, you edit, and then you're constantly being like, okay, like what should what I do, do, do next? And you know, you, do, you, do, you know, you can always do more. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And like, I think that's what gets really like oof, I overwhelming. Like that, that's what I think I enjoy. Wise, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. It's personality based. Like I genuinely do feel stressed if I'm like not can't work more because that sounds ridiculous but as in if you're in a job where it's like you know exactly what there's you're doing there's a ceiling there's where you there's are there's a well, ceiling yeah. i don't i don't like having a ceiling on me i feel like that puts pressure on me to be like yeah what? i would agree though like now that i'm doing this like full, full time i'm like yeah this is like i can I, ha I have the ability to earn what like as much as i want if yeah. i yeah if i put my mind to it uh i just feel like it's a, it's less stress but when you are stressful, it's higher amounts of stress, but yeah. for less like when you are stressful. So, so like he, he's like, saying when he's stressed, it's like yeah. very stressful. So oh, the nine yeah. to five is like more stressful in general. Yeah. But when you are a YouTuber, it's stressful. The worse. stress is think... way more, but it shouldn't be. You make it more stressful than it is. Because realistically, if I'm stressed and I'm like, oh, I don't have a video today. Uh, like I don't, I don't have anything to post. That's your own stress. Nothing changes. Yeah, like you, you don't you. have anyone to tell you what to do. You don't no. have anyone to remind you to like do something. You don't have a paycheck every month that you can rely on. Things like that, and that can are be stressful. Like scary. I um, think. Yeah, but obviously that sort of thing does change. Like you might not be stressed about money if you, the bigger you get, because you kind of as much as. You don't have a paycheck. You could still not upload for a month, and you'll be fine because of every con like the content you've made up until that point. I can imagine how stressful it was for people with the whole uh, demonetization thing. Like yeah. we were, we were quite good with that because obviously, for one, we're very comfortable where we are. Mm. But for people who like had their whole living was kind of like almost like crushed yeah. very quickly. Terrifying. That's quite scary. I imagine that like having the looming pressure of knowing that someone else can take. But that it. could still happen. Yeah, there's no like YouTube redundancy pay or. Like, you know, of course, of course, just, yeah, but like, stop. but I think like we're at a point where we could, yeah, like, like, like where Simon is, yeah, we could make a whole, we could make Simon.com and make our own video platform. True. We can like, we could, we could do it right now. We could go, we could monetize, <laughs> we could monetize. So different things we have our clothing we have other stuff yeah um that's why i'd always like to say to anyone who does our stuff make sure you put money everywhere yeah because don't you, just be you don't want to run ad growth no. you want to have like you want to have your merch we're all trying to say new that isn't just merch because you won't do as well from that Write right some now songs. yeah do that but literally do it put anything out that can monetize Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, all of their links will be in my description box below. I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye. That was lackluster cat. Say goodbye. Bye. Oh, uh, later on. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>